for this month, we're going to be tying our fluttering stonefly pattern. One of our favorite stoneflies uh, gets us pumped for these upcoming hatches that we're going to be having here relatively soon. I'm going to tie this version in the salmon fly color. So I'm going to start with my orange thread. Um, I am going to start by coating just right here behind the eye. Uh, as you finish the fly, you'll notice you have a bare spot if you don't do this on the hook. So I like to coat that with the thread, just a nice even layer there, directly behind the eye. And then I kind of spiral wrap back to about the barb of the hook here. And now I'll, again, tighten my wraps up so they're close together. And I'm going to bring my thread just right here in front of the hook point. Okay, so the reason I do this, this is going to give something for my zapper gap to really bite into and help hold that foam on really tight. I've taken a piece of foam here and I've taken a razor blade and just cut that uh, foam piece here just from about the middle of that head all the way back to the tail. Um, and so you want to use something really sharp like a razor blade or a nice sharp pair of scissors. Uh, that was not included in the box, and then your Zappa Gap, which also wasn't included here. But I'm going to go ahead and put just a nice coating of Zappa Gap here all along my thread wraps. And then I'm going to line that up just so that is even, equal parts of that head and tail are hanging out equally. And I'm going to go ahead and sandwich that uh, slit I just made right on to that glue. So now I can bring my thread right up here onto my first notch. Now this is something that's kind of important with this fly here. So as you're wrapping, you want your thread tension to be the same throughout because if I start to wrap really tight here and then I get really complacent and loose on my next wraps, as you start to notice, as you start to build this fly, you'll see these loose wraps start to show up on the underside of the fly. So we don't want that. So try to keep your tension the same throughout. So we're not going to tie anything here on this back notch. So I'm going to go ahead and advance my thread now forward. So I'm going to cross it up on top of the foam and then come right down onto that next notch. Okay, so what I've done here for our next step is I've just cut out a piece of our white um, kind of transparent foam here. This is for our wings. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay that wing right on top of my foam so it kind of is at an angle. And it's about the width of the hook gap. I want that wing to extend about even with the tail end of my body foam. Go ahead and just bring one wrap around and tie that down. Come in here close with my scissors and trim out the excess. And then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to just kind of V those away from each other. So it kind of looks like when this is on the water, these wings are kind of laid out. Um, like this salmon fly is struggling to get up off the water. It's kind of fluttering. And that's kind of where this gets its name. And so those wings will kind of just stay apart at a V. Um, and it'll just kind of act as a little attractor there for the fish to pick up on. Okay, so our next step is we're going to tie in our elk hair wing. And I've gone ahead and already stacked this here. And it's going to pull that stacker apart. I've got my tips lined up and they're facing the direction they're going to be tied in. So I'm just going to ease those out. I'll just brush out any of the hair that's short, that's not going to make the cut here and get tied onto the hook. I am going to brush this out with my comb just to kind of get some of that under fur out. And now I'll just kind of examine that, those, these tips here is what I'm doing, is kind of off screen. I'm just pulling out any of the tips that are broken, um, they just don't look quite right to me. So I'll go ahead and pull all those out. And I'm just going to do a quick measurement here, I'm going to hold these tips right to the end of my fly and I'm just going to hold that there with my left hand and just come in here. I might lose a little bit. That's fine. I'm just going to cut this elk hair just flush just right where I'm going to be tying it in at. Okay, so I'm going to bring those butt ends back down and I'm going to bring my thread up and around just a loose gathering wrap, kind of let that hair stack up right on top of the foam. I'm going to pull down tight on my first wrap. I'm not letting go with my left hand. I don't want that hair to slip to the other side of the fly. And we're gonna let that hair flare really good right there. So now we have a nice, good bushy wing. And if some of your butt ends here are kind of long, you can come in here and trim them up if you'd like. It's not a big deal. We're gonna cover it up with the next wing anyways, but you can trim those out a little bit if you'd like. I'm going to take my flex floss here. I like to kind of leave these long here at first. So I'm going to tie in more than I need 
I'll trim them up here at the end so I can size them up just right. I'll just set those just right here against the center of the foam on the side, on each side. I'm gonna bring this far side up between my thread and the foam and let the weight of the bobbin just kind of hold that leg there. I'll go ahead and bring my thread up and through again. Tie that down with a few more tight wraps. Now I'm gonna bring my thread forward. We're gonna cross that foam up here to the front notch. I'll just do two wraps here just to hold that. Zap a gap back out here and just let that zap a gap kind of sink down in to that elk hair there just to help hold that. Makes a little more durable fly. Okay, then we're gonna repeat the step here with our wing again. I'm gonna extend these tips to the back of this, uh, just to the end of that back wing now. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come here with my scissors. I'm gonna cut out these bud ends here. Just try to cut that as clean and as straight as you can. And now I'm gonna let that thread kind of pull these bud ends down. I'll let them flare, pull down tight, let them flare out. That way we get a nice even wing throughout. The wing's extended back to that back wing. I like to kind of grab right here on the foam and squeeze and pull down tight. That helps that elk hair to really flare and stand up really good. So again, that's just makes a nice bushy profile on the water, easy for you to pick up. Uh, makes it uh, 10 times nicer to, to pick up with your eyes with the, all that elk hair there. I'm just gonna take my indicator yarn here and we'll just tie that in right on top of my elk hair. Fold that back. And tie that guy down there too. I don't worry too much about these little butt ends right here. Um, I don't think it's gonna matter as much. If you really wanna clean it up, you can really get in there with your scissors and make sure that's clean. Um, but I don't worry about it too much. And there's our almost finished fly. We're just gonna tie in another set of legs here. Again, I'm just gonna start this on the back side. I'm just gonna slip that leg right up between the thread and the foam. Position it right where I want. And I'll start on this near side, center it, bring my thread up and around. And now I can make sure I wrap that down good. All right, and now we're ready to whip finish. So you can either whip finish just right here, um, just around the head of that foam there. I like to kind of just come up underneath and wrap right underneath the eye or underneath the foam head. I'll whip finish just right here underneath my foam. And again, just before I'm done, I'm gonna trim the legs. I'm gonna add just a little bit of Zappa Gap here to that front wing. Let that Zappa Gap sink down in. Just really secure up that head. And then I'll trim my wings to, or my legs to size so they're all the same length. Trim those legs up to size, make them all the same length. And there is your fluttering stone. Fun little pattern to fish. Great pattern for a hopper dropper scenario. Um, so let us know how you do with it when you get a stonefly hatch near you. you got two different uh, colors you can do in the box with your yarn. It's kind of designed to do a salmon fly look and also a golden stone look. You could take a marker to this as well and darken it up as you like. Um, or you can just leave it as that as well. I've, I've had success just with, the, just with the straight tan foam also. So let us know how you do with it. Have fun tying it.